is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Gets to cover some actual real football now as the Canes have returned. How you doing, my man? You doing good? I'm doing great. Uh, you know, like you, like you said, uh, actual practices now, actual uh, progress. No pads, right? Not right away, right? Do they do the pads right no, away? No, just, sh- just shoulder pads and helmets. I mean, it's nothing. And shorts. I mean, the first, the first, yeah, shorts and shells or whatever they want to call it. But the first, uh, first two days are like that. Then they start to amp right. up from there. Right, exactly. Okay, all right. Uh, Injury-wise, who are they missing? And is well, there anything serious? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously some of the guys that they were hoping would come back, you know, in time for fall practice, guys that we always sort of debated, will they be back, uh, still aren't back. Zion Nelson, you know, was out there kind of gingerly doing things, but he he's not, uh, you know, Zion Nelson yet. injured. God, that, that never happens. <laughs> uh, Trevante Citizen, you know, he'll be back probably in the middle of the season, as, as Mario told me in Charlotte when we were out there uh, for ACC last week. Um, you know, there are a, a couple guys just coming out, coming back slowly, but no, nobody of significance, right? When you talk about from the springtime till now, it's not like somebody developed a new injury. Uh, so, you know, there's one guy that was missing out there today that was notable was Markeith Williams. He's like the third or fourth safety. We'll see why he missed practice. It still hasn't been figured out why he wasn't out there for day one, but it could have just been whatever you know something academics who knows what it is discipline who knows what it is uh but we'll see if he's back out there tomorrow and that'll be something to follow but again all the important guys were out there yeah could have been personal maybe you had to go to the dentist or something bro you had a cavity who knows who knows what it is right you you, you never know bro we're all human beings we might need something (laughs) that doesn't seem like anything serious at least because it was a very small absence so uh, and it's not necessarily like a big practice or anything that you're missing. Like, oh, he's missing the, you know, the the Tuesday or Wednesday of practice leading up to a Saturday game. You know, game planning or something. That would be that would be big if you're missing something like that. But this at this point, it's not too it's not too serious. All right, how should the Canes fan approach this? Because, dude, I got to tell you, man, what I get on on DMs and and texts at times, like. Well, they're bigger and they're stronger and they were successful in the transfer portal and they, they should be challenging for the ACC. And it's like, well, wait a minute. I haven't seen any chemistry develop. I haven't – they don't know how to win yet collectively. Yeah. You know, there's like a lot of things that go into this. All these coaches don't really know all these players. They don't even know how they're all going to react in certain situations. Right. So there's like a lot of unknowns. So what would you tell the Canes fan to – how to assess what they what they sh- or how sh- what they sh- what should they realistically expect? Yeah, it, it it's a tough thing because obviously you want to be excited about all the guys Mario brought in. He's got forty two new faces there in terms of the roster compared to the end of last season. So forty two new guys. There's a lot of fresh faces. Sixteen transfers among them. Uh, you got seven new assistant coaches. You're in the right offense. You're in the right defense. But again, these guys have to go out there and execute. And, and what I try to tell Miami fans who are like, we should be able to contend, I remind them that Florida State beat them by 42 points last season in Hard Rock. And they are coming back with the majority of their team and the same coaching staff. They've held on to the same, the same coaching staff. So there's continuity. Those things are all really hard Huge. to just, Huge. you know, leapfrog and, and, and change. So... Um, yes, I expect Miami to be a better football team. I think inevitably you bring in 42 new guys and you have a bunch of transfers. Uh, there's going to be some of those guys that are going to help you right away, right? They're going to help, but this is still a football team that went five and seven last year, lost to middle Tennessee state, got destroyed at the end of the season by Clemson and Pittsburgh. Um, and they got to find their mojo on offense And and they didn't play, you know, fundamentally well. That's no. the other thing that I need to see from this team. And I know, I, I, dude, I know it's all coming from Mario. It's, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of the Moss situation. You know, right. people would tell me, oh, this ain't working. And, dude, it's a new business. They're all going to screw up. They screwed up. They have five DPs. They got fine, all that shit. Say whatever you want, bro. The Moss brothers will win eventually. They're, they're maniacal. They want to win. They're going to outwork everybody. They'll, they'll make a crap ton of mistakes. 
But eventually, and there you go. Here it comes, Messi and Busquets and all that. And eventually, you know, the the, the will is going to work. I think it's the same thing with Mario. But it's going to take some time, just like with these guys. It took them a couple of years to finally convince Messi and get things to fall into place. For Mario, I think it's going to be the same thing. It's going to take him a couple of years to get the people he wants, the coach he wants, the 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 the, the culture that he wants, that he's used to and, and with the Canes from years ago. All of those things is going to take a while, dude. And we, well, we just, and, and, and I would say, you know, you got to remember, I know nobody really respects the ACC, but, you know, Pittsburgh, again, they're, you know, not Miami, they're not on Miami's schedule, but Pat Narduzzi's been there nine years now. Okay, he's built. He built them in the ACC championships. They have continuity on their coaching staff. They have right. a right. culture. Uh, the NC States of the world. Yes, Dave Doran never wins. <laughs> NC State never wins the ACC, but they win eight, nine games every year. Right? They're always a bowl team. They're always consistent. FSU, um, Clemson. Right. There's there's teams that you don't just leapfrog because hey, we're Miami and we won twenty years ago. Like right. I think you need to look at what's happened in the last 20 years and have a little bit more um, of a self-reflection and then say, you know, look in your mirror and say, man, this is really who we are. If we're going to get to here, we got a long way to go. And so I think they're going to be better. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, urinate I all be over the – Not much, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm not trying to urinate on the optimism here. I'm just trying to, uh, you know, wake people up a little bit who, 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 are, who are just going to automatically think, oh, man, forget it. This is it. We're, we're back. You know, I think what happens at times, and, and it might be going on with some of our older fans, um, you know, they were used to the reloading years. Right. But the problem is when you reload, you're reloading on top of great culture, on mm -hmm. top of great coaches, on top of a, a system that's already in place. None of that exists here. So just because you went and got 40 people doesn't mean you reloaded. You've never been loaded in the first place. Right. So you you haven't even gotten to that first stage where you're actually succeeding a lot. And then the next class comes in and the next class comes in. That's how the University of Miami used to be, Manny. But right now, it, it, the, the thing to think of, oh, well, we hit well the transfer portal. We got a bunch of uh, uh, good recruits. We're set. We reloaded. Ah, that's just not accurate, man. No, it's not. And, and, and what I would tell people is you're counting on a lot of a lot of new guys to deliver for you. And that's, you know, you do you ever does anybody ever hit on 90 or 100 percent of their, their new additions? Right. There's always something that goes wrong. Uh, you know, go just go position by position. Yes. Tyler Van Dyke. You have an experienced starting quarterback who had had a good, uh, you know, nice stretch running back. Henry Parrish. Yes, he ran for 600 yards last year. But is he a true number one stud in the backfield? No receiver. Who's the guy? They're, they're, you know, Charleston Rambo left two years ago. Last year there was a lot of inconsistency. You hope Colby Young takes a step up. You hope a, a guy like Xavier Strippo, who's now in his fourth year at Miami, takes off and becomes one of. The, but again, what have they proven? What have they put down? Uh, tight end. You just lost Will Mallory to the NFL. You're counting on Elijah Royal, who's coming back from a torn ACL, to be the yeah. guy there. Uh, offensive line. You you picked up two transfers, two really good guys, but you're starting a true freshman at right tackle, who may be great in two to three years and be gone to the NFL in a first round pick. That's the way they talk about Francis Mavigoa. But he's a freshman. This is going to yeah. be his first season in there. Uh, so that's the offense. Go to the defense. Uh, yes, you got Akeem Mesador back. He was solid. He was an all-ACC caliber type player last year. You have Cam Kitchens at safety, an All-American. That's great. Uh, but who are the new linebackers you're counting on? A position that was, you know, embarrassed time and time again. You're depending on a transfer from Washington State. Uh, you're depending on a, on a, a kid in Wesley Besaint who is still putting on weight on his body. He's very thin coming out of high school. So, again, like, you can just go up and down this roster and say, where, is the pro where are the guys who were proven? studs there's just not a lot of them you're counting on a lot of fresh blood to deliver uh, one of the things i know mario wants because he's that's kind of what his thing is is to have more power more strength more size uh and that's something that we watched over the last you know few years that the recruiting just wasn't up to snuff at times when you went up against some other you know top teams yeah what did you see now when you when you watch this group now together compared to what you saw over the last couple of years are you seeing that size so that potential might be there 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think you're getting there. I think you know, in, in the backfield, uh, th this kid Mark Fletcher uh, from from American Harry, six two, two hundred thirty pounds. You stand him next to you know Don Chaney and and Chavante Citizen and Henry Henry, and he he just looks like a grown man among boys. But he's eighteen years old. He just got there. Um, you look at the offensive line, right? You look at Maui Goa and Oakland Lola, two six 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 five, three hundred plus guys. Amazing. They just got there. Right. Um, defensive side, uh, you know, the linebackers, I think there's a considerable difference in the size. There are a lot of short guys. They don't have short guys anymore. I mean, Corey Flagg is still on the roster, but how much is Corey Flagg going to play? He's basically, uh, I think, been moved into a backup role um, behind this kid they got out of Louisville, K, uh, K.J. Uh, Cloyd, who's, who's 6'2", 230 pounds. The, the Maui Goa brother who transferred from Washington State, he's 6'3", 230. So, yes, the size is getting there. They're getting more dudes, but they still need a big D tackle. Oh, they still, like, they don't have a run stuffer. Uh, you know, their, their D tackles right now are probably Leonard Taylor, who's 6'3", 305. And Branson Dean, who's 6'2", 280. You want a big sucker, bro. You want somebody 335 to plug into that middle of that defense, and they don't really have have that. So um, improvement, not there yet. Okay. Yeah, and, and we were spoiled over the years with absolute elite play at tackle yeah. with Russell Maryland and Jerome Brown and um, – who am I? Who am I? Uh, who's uh, who am I missing here? I'm missing a whole bunch. Well, I mean, of them. you've had a bunch of them. I mean, you had uh, Calais, Calais Campbell. I mean, right. you know, there's some some nasty, nasty defensive end, defensive linemen that we've had here, especially at tackle guys that have ended up being in the top five of of the draft. Yeah, on a Warren Sapp, Warren, Warren Sapp, Sapp Wolford, all, all those guys. Go for it, Jesus Christ! You know, it, it's that they de and that's that's always been a part of all their great defenses. They usually had a hog in the middle that was well, just a beast. Lance Kidry talked a little bit yesterday at media. We got a chance to talk to the coordinators for about half an hour, both offense and defense. And he's like, look, we'd love to have a big sucker, you know, right right there in the middle of that defense. But there's ways that you can you can sort of attack around that depending on, you know, the way you use your pass rush and et cetera. But, um, you know, I think against elite teams, right? Like when they line up against Texas A&M, who has an SEC offensive line. When you line up against Florida State, that's who's recruited an SEC caliber <laughs> offensive line that's in Clemson, that's when you need those dudes, and and that's when you'll feel that they're that you don't have one. Yeah, I'm with you there, uh, Tyler Van Dyke. Uh, I know this is more of his game that this coach has more of a spread. Yeah. Uh, does it look like he's comfortable? Yeah, I mean, I, I've had multiple conversations now with Tyler in the off season, and, and today he was out there throwing the football. He he tells me that he you know he worked a lot on his footwork in the off season uh, with his quarterback coach. Uh, you know, he, he's worked a lot to sort of perfect his throwing motion. He injured his shoulder. He had a grade three AC joint sprain. That's never good for a quarterback. But he recovered from it. He didn't need to have surgery. Uh, he let it heal. He's got a little bone sort of sticking up in his in his throwing shoulder. Uh, but that's just part of the deal, man. You, you look at most of these football players nowadays who have those injuries. They all have that little bone sort of sticking up. Uh, I have it. I, I you have, ha the, you I, have it. Yeah. I have a second degree AC joint injury. And I don't know if you can tell from there, but there's because it's a black shirt. But right. I have I have that bump that it never it, it never, never goes healed. away. It it's never like goes a, away. It's, it's like a war like, scar pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah. and, but he throws the football. I mean, look, I, I've watched him throw. I, I don't see any difference with the velocity on the ball. I don't see any difference uh, in, in his arm strength. Like he's any weaker. Uh, he feels like, you know, the fact that he kind of had to rehab himself and, and just go through the basic stuff as a quarterback, help, help him sort of perfect that skill a little more, his throwing motion, things that he needed to improve. So, uh, he's been working hard, man, and 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 look, give the kid credit. Uh, he, he's he's taking more responsibility with his receivers, making phone calls in the offense, uh, you know, getting people together for those workouts, organizing them. Um, I think he's more committed, and uh, that should pay off uh, for for him this season. What are you uh, working on on uh, the athletics so folks can check you out, my friend? Yeah, I just put out uh, today. Uh, I did sort of a fun uh, survey with about fifteen of the players during media day yesterday, where we covered. Uh, you know, some fun, fun topics, you know, who's the fastest, who's the strongest, uh, weight room goals, NIL, who's the funniest guy on the team, all that kind of stuff to just give a little personality to some of these dudes. 
Um, and so you, you can check that out at the athletic and then the next couple of days, we're going to have my, uh, projected starting, uh, rotations and lineups for, for Miami, uh, this season. I, I, I kind of did a position by position breakdown guys that I think will be in the rotation guys. I think will be in the starting lineup, uh, just based on some conversations I've had with coaches and, and people around the program. All right. Looking forward to reading that. And if you want to read more of that, Subscribe to The Athletic and, and support Manny and all the great writers there in The Athletic and follow him on Twitter at Manny underscore Navarro and visit our friends at Canesware at 2511 South University Drive in Davie. And remember, when you order over $99, you will get free shipping. They've got anything and everything practically with the Canes logo on it. they got Inter-Miami gear, messy jerseys, shirts. Miami Heat, Miami Dolphins, Miami Marlins. Go. They got it all, <laughs> baby. And yep. what? 2566. Oh, that's right. The new address. That's right. They're in the new place. 2566 South University Drive okay. in Davie. That's right. They moved to the bigger location. It's literally next to La Spada. So right. it's well, actually that's, even better. It's right. even better. Now I got to go for sure. Get a sandwich and a hat and, and call it a day. And call it a day. Bro. And, you know, when you get a La Spada sub, that's right. That is, you, you're a winner there, baby. No doubt about that. Manny, thank you, my brother. We'll catch up later on in the week. All right, brother. Talk soon. Take care. Got it. There you go. The great Manny Navarro, baby. Getting it done, just like La Spada. It's